Hey, what's up everybody, Trofinit here and welcome back to Gwentech. In this show we talk about interesting Gwentechs to play around with or discuss new features in the game. And that is exactly what we'll be doing today. Master Mirror is finally live and aside from rendering my predictions on the subject of the evolving card completely incorrect, it brings a breath of fresh air to a game which had been standing still for quite some time now. Weather is back, some of the leader cards are back, we got the fancy abilities on the new evolving cards and even some long overdue nerfs on certain overpowered archetypes. There is a lot to talk about and we'll go into great detail about everything in update 7.0 in an upcoming video that I'm preparing for the weekend. But while writing that script I also had a section on the new reward system. Originally I didn't think too much of it since it's temporary until we get a new journey next month but after crunching some numbers and expanding that section in that original script larger and larger, I really wanted to move this to a separate video, so I can fully explain the calculations into why this is not such a good system right now. I know it's a controversial topic, but a deeper look into this new system was warranted in my opinion. If you don't like a slightly mathematical analysis on this, then you can look forward to a broader Master Mirror Impressions video on update 7.0 this weekend. If you do like it, however, welcome. I think you will be pleased. The new reward system is at the same time similar to what we had in the previous months, but also different since we lack the journey system. This makes it feel like you get less rewards than before. But is this really the case? Let's crunch some numbers and see what we end up with. Let's say an average player plays 4 matches a day, winning half of them for around an hour of playtime. For ease of calculation, let's also say that they complete one of the quest challenges and a daily challenge per day as well. Which is very optimistic, but it gives us a good base to calculate from. During journey, this would net you 6 crown points from regular play, 6 more from the well rested bonus, and 20 from the quest challenge for a total of 32 points. However, you only have 3 quests available in the free track each week, so you'll earn 20 crown points less in the last 4 days of the week. You need 24 crown points per level, so over the course of the week you'll earn a total of 144 crown points, which results in 6 levels on the dollar. You get 2 reward points per level on average on the free track, which nets you 12 reward points per week. Add 1 reward point on average for the daily quest and you end up with 19 reward points per week, give or take. So in the new system, the Master Mirror system, if I can call it that, you also have a quest active, Gaunter's Ultimate Challenge. But there's only 4 quest steps, with the 5th one repeating where you just need to complete a daily challenge. You still need to collect 24 crown points to get 2 reward points, so that doesn't change anything for our calculations. The first 3 quest challenges provide you with 30 crown points instead of the 20 you get in Journey. The 4th one gives you just a title and the 5th one gives you 1 reward point directly but requires you to complete a daily quest so it is throttled that way. Calculation is a bit more difficult this way, but with the same assumptions from before, you get 6 crown points from playing and 30 from the quest challenge during the first 3 days. That nets you 4.5 levels in the first 3 days, for 8 reward points plus 3 daily quests is 11 reward points in total. The 4th day gives you 6 crown points and just the title. Since you had 12 crown points left from yesterday, you haven't reached a level yet, so you only get the 1 reward point from the daily quest, which gives you 12 reward points in total after 4 days. For the remaining 3 days, you get 2 reward points for the daily quest, since that 5th challenge gives you an extra reward point for completing a daily quest, and 6 crown points for playing each day. With that, you will only reach one more level before the end of the week, for an extra 2 reward points bringing your total in the last 3 days to 8 reward points in your complete total up to 20 reward points compared to the 19 during Journey. That's one more reward point per week for an average player during this month. And that sounds pretty good, right? Kind of, but we're skimming over a lot of options you simply don't have in the new system. 
If you bought the season pass in Journey, you basically doubled your reward point gains from levels up to four on average per level. So you gained four reward points on average per level. You also got access to three more quests per week, with a total of 60 extra crown points on top of all the extra cosmetics you gain. If we recalculate the reward point gain that way, we get a clearer view onto why it feels a lot less rewarding to play right now. Again, using the same assumptions, we end up with 204 crown points by the end of the week, for 8.5 level. In the current system, and with the same effort, you would only get to 5.5 levels. Those 8.5 levels now give you 4 reward points per level, for a total of 32 reward points. Add to that the 7 reward points from the daily quests, and you end up with 39 reward points per week on average meaning you get 20 reward points less per week with the same amount of effort during this month if you bought the journey pass before. Playing more than our average assumptions would also work in favor of journey because of the well-rested bonus crowns you got and the fact that after journey was completed you still got two reward points for your first 6, 18 and 42 rounds you win each day. The fourth step of each quest during this month also requires you to have the evolving card of the faction you choose, possibly halting your progress if you're a newer player and limiting your reward point gain even more. And on top of all of that, I'm also ignoring the reward points you can get if you fully complete the journey, up to 40 extra reward points if you completed both tracks of quests. So basically, to conclude this video, the new system is only slightly more beneficial if, and only if, you're a completely free and casual player that doesn't play too many matches. But the more you play, the less rewarding it will be compared to before. If you're coming down from having the full journey pass, then the new system cuts your reward point gains down to roughly two-thirds of what it was before. All in all, let's just hope that we quickly get Journey back next month. So, to end it off, what do you think about the new reward system? Do you feel like it leaves you with not enough incentives to play more, or does it not impact you as much? Let me know in the comment section down below, and if you're aching for more videos, you can check out my Art Secret videos in Gwent, or any of my broader analysis videos, like this one. A full analysis video of Master Mirror and Update 7.0 is coming this weekend and we'll start up the Master Mirror deck guides on the channel soon, starting with a Wild Hunt Frost deck. Any feedback is greatly appreciated. Check me out on Twitter at @trophynut. that's T-R-O-V-N-U-T, if you want to talk. And if you enjoyed this video, why not give it a like? Any support is really appreciated. Thank you enormously for watching and I hope to see you guys in the next video of Gwent Edge. Goodbye!